the aim of uh, this uh, review is uh, to give uh, a holistic uh, uh, vision of the problem of the ranged alkaline uh, phosphatase evaluation. I am uh, Salvatore Minisola, honorary professor of uh, internal medicine at uh, Sapienza University of Rome. We have just published a review article entitled Diagnostic Approach to Abnormal Alkaline Phosphatase Value that will appear in the April issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. If you go indeed through the literature, you can find that the approach to the problem of raised or reduced alkaline phosphatase value is very compartmentalized. Indeed, both Bonn and gastroenterology journals approach the problem mostly focusing on skeletal or, or liver and biliary tract disorders respectively. I am an internal medicine doctor and therefore I have a holistic approach to the problems because obviously when you see a patient, let's say for example with a raised value of alkaline phosphatase, you don't know where is the problem and so you have to approach the patients in a holistic way. So there are uh, four isozymes of alkaline phosphatase but the most important as far as uh, the clinical practice is concerned is the tissue non-specific alkaline phosphatase that is the most abundant uh, alkaline phosphatase in the circulation and that uh, comprises both the bone and the, the liver uh, isoforms. Let's say a patient has elevated or reduced value of alkaline phosphatase we should follow the pathway that we generally follow for every kind of disease. This is obviously comprises a careful evaluation of patient history, physical examination, and a sound application of laboratory and radiological tests. In this context, just to make an example, it's important to ask patients if they are taking some drugs that can in some way compromise, for example, the liver. I can give you uh, some example. For example, in a patient with some liver specific symptoms, such as itching or the abdominal pain, if you find an increased level of alkaline phosphatase, it is most probable that the diagnosis is a liver or biliary tract disease. On the contrary, for example, in a very old patients with bone and muscle pain, if you find a raised value of alkaline phosphatase, the most probable cause is, let's say, vitamin D uh, deficiency. One thing that is important is that if you want to separate uh, the uh, bond to alkaline phosphatase in terms of that if you want to know which is the origin, one important step is the measurement of gamma glutamyl transferase because gamma glutamyl transferase is raised in cases of uh, liver and biliary disorder, while it is not raised in cases of uh, bone problems. There are obviously many advances in the field, both from a diagnostic and from a therapeutic point of view. For example, now there are new sophisticated methods to try to separate the bone from liver uh, isoform. And obviously also from uh, contrary to uh, we, we generally believe uh, alkaline phosphatase has been also utilized as a, a therapeutic drug. There have been some uh, clinical trials in which it has been uh, utilized as a suppressor of systemic inflammatory processes, even though the final results are not very uh, 
conclusive and uh, satisfactory. But uh, obviously, you know, for example, that alkaline phosphatase is used in uh, both pediatric and adult patients with hypophosphatasia. So there are a lot of expectation of this is a very, very uh, not expensive uh, biochemical marker that we utilize every day when we want to diagnose diseases in our patients. So I hope that uh, now you are uh, interested in uh, alkaline phosphatase and I hope that you will be able to read this article because once again, I think that this is the first article in which the problem of alkaline phosphatase, both in terms of raised or decreased values, is approached in a very holistic way so that you can find all theoretically possible causes of uh, the arrangement of uh, alkaline phosphatase value, but also you can have uh, some basic information and also some uh, therapeutic information. We hope that you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mailclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com Mail Proceedings, or journal updates on Facebook www.facebook.com Mayo Clinic Proceedings. You can also follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, available at Mayo Proceedings. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research, published by Elsevier Incorporated. All rights are reserved, including those for text and data mining, AI training, and similar technologies.